Good morning and welcome to worship at Bread of Life Deaf Lutheran Church. My name is Michelle Lewis and I am the pastor for Bread of Life. Hello, my name is Dorothy Sparks. I'm a deacon here at Bread of Life. I'm David Evans, I'm the ASL interpreter. As we have um, recalled in the last couple of weeks as we gather together, God is the one who gathers us. It is not a mistake that we are here together in this space. It is not an accident that those of us who join in worship together are here. God brings us together. Even in this time of craziness, in this time of unknown experiences, God is at work in our world with us, in us, and through us. God gathers us. And so as a visual reminder for ourselves, we light a candle to remember that it is God who does this work of bringing us together. So I encourage you in the next moment or two to gather your candles and to um, light candles in your homes as we light a candle here. And at this time, I invite you to focus on the candle flame, to take some deep breaths, allow your body to calm and relax as we enter in to worship together, remembering that God is the one who gathers us and holds us close. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. God has broken the chains of death forever. Let our praises ring. Alleluia. God has broken the chains of death forever. Alleluia. Let our praises ring. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. God of hope, we do not look for Jesus among the dead. Jesus is alive and is the Lord of life. Teach our hearts and our minds to trust in the risen life we share with Christ, help us grow toward the fullness of life with you. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Just as God gathers us, God teaches us. God gives us one another, and God gives us the Bible, the Word of God, to help us learn, to learn about who God is and about God's love for us. 
So we continue in our Easter season and studying the stories of Jesus um, showing up to the with the disciples after the resurrection. And today we finish out the end of the Gospel of John. It's the last part of chapter 21, when Jesus is in conversation with Peter. Peter is a young man. He's probably in his early to mid-teen years, maybe 15, 16, 17, something like that. He is a teenage guy. He's impulsive. And he throws himself into everything he does. He just goes headfirst right into everything. And Peter is encouraging for us as a disciple because he's not perfect. He makes kind of a lot of mistakes. And he struggles to understand Jesus. And often he really doesn't quite get what Jesus is doing. So when he fails, Peter fails emphatically. He fails in a major way. And when he understands, often he understands just briefly. And then he goes back to being confused and struggling and trying to understand Jesus, trying to understand God's vision. As a young man, Peter struggles to comprehend that God's ways are humble. That God is self-giving. That God seeks out the lost and the lonely. As a young man, as a young disciple, Peter struggles to understand that God is not brash and forceful, that God is not acting out of political gain, and that what God does is not for the, um, that God, what God does is for the sake of others, not to help God feel better, but to help us feel better. This is what God is doing. And so as a young disciple, Peter really struggles to understand this. And Jesus comes to Peter and has a conversation, encouraging him, inviting him back into the community, giving him work, asking Peter to join in what God is doing. And at the end of the lesson today, we hear or see Jesus say to Peter, follow me. And Peter does. Peter does follow. And he does so in a way that his life and his death give honor and glory to God. Peter becomes a martyr. He dies for his beliefs. He dies a gruesome, terrible death, similar to Jesus' death. He dies out of love for God and love for the people he serves. Peter dies in such a way that God is honored. And his life and his death point to God's love. To the truth that God is willing to die for us. So as much as Peter made mistakes again and again as a young disciple, he also learned to follow Jesus so closely. That as we look at his whole life, we see a life that's similar to Jesus. We see a death that's similar to Jesus's as well. So at this time, I ask Dorothy to share our gospel lesson um, from John chapter 21.
When they had finished eating, Jesus asked Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Simon replied, yes, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. Jesus asked a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon replied, Lord, yes, you know I love you. Jesus said to him, take care of my sheep. And then he asked a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was sad that he, Jesus had asked him a third time. He replied, Lord, you know everything. You know I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. I assure you that when you were young, you tied your own belt and walked around wherever you wanted to. When you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and another will tie your belt and will lead you where you do not want to go. He said this to show the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. After saying this, Jesus said to him, Peter, follow me. Then Jesus did many other miraculous signs in his disciples' presence, signs that aren't recorded in this scroll. But these are the things that are written so that you will believe that Jesus is the Christ, God's Son, and that by believing, you will have life in his name. The word of the Lord. My friends, Jesus persistently invites us into the work of God. Jesus persistently reaches out to us, loves us and trusts us to show the love and kindness of God. We are not alone. What we say and what we do makes a difference. Well, my friends, I don't know about you, but for me, this last week has been hard. Today is our eighth Sunday of worshiping online. It's been two months since we've been together in person. On April 30th, I presided at the graveside service for Marvin Olson, a beloved member of the Bread of Life congregation. And on May 7th, I presided at the funeral for Shirley Solberg. And in both cases, the services, of course, had limited attendance. And they were not held in our community. As followers of Jesus, we cling to the promises of resurrection and hope. We cling to the promises of new life that comes out of death and devastation. But in these days, those promises can be very hard to hold on to. The sense of sadness of being alone, the losses of our connections with others, relationships that feel harder to maintain, 
that sense of sadness is growing. There is ambiguousness of how long this will last and that ambiguousness is heavy on us. And really it's just annoying. We don't know how long it's gonna continue. And it is hard to resist the falsehood that just disconnecting is easier. Maybe it would be easier on us if we just let go and we went and hid out in our rooms. <laughs> when those lies about it's just easier if I don't talk to others, those lies build up and our loneliness as we feel isolated, those things compound and our doubts increase. And then we tend to focus on those doubts and the unknowns. And then we get grumpy and we much prefer to stay grumpy and feel irritated than to do the work of digging out and reconnecting. And so as that process happens, it becomes hard to believe that we still are part of something bigger than ourselves. And sometimes we wonder if what we do makes any difference at all. And sometimes it feels so much easier just to withdraw and go back to our old ways of doing it alone, fighting our own fights and just getting through one day at a time. So I wonder if the sum of this is how Peter was feeling. Peter was so enthusiastic. I'll lay down my life for you, he said to Jesus. And to his dismay, Jesus's response to those words and Peter's own actions were actually Peter denying Jesus three times Peter denies knowing Jesus and then he storms off in a rage because other people recognize him and they're trying to link him to Jesus and then the rooster crows and Peter is cut down. The tears pour out of Peter, running down his face like rain running down on a rock. As the rooster crows, Peter is isolated, overwhelmed with grief. Maybe he's humiliated, angry, disappointed in himself. Wondering if there will ever be a chance for him to apologize. And then after the resurrection, we find Peter among the other disciples. He hasn't uh, totally abandoned them the way that Judas did. 
he stays with the disciples, but I really wonder if he is keeping himself apart, creating some barriers. He says, I'm going fishing. And it didn't matter what the others were going to do. Peter was going fishing. It did not matter that Jesus had called Peter to focus on drawing people toward God. Peter was going fishing for fish. He wasn't interested in fishing for people. It didn't matter that Jesus had empowered Peter to forgive sins and to set people free from their mistakes. That didn't matter to Peter. He was going fishing. And so at breakfast on the beach, Jesus and Peter talk. Jesus reaches out to Peter, reminding him, Peter, you are accepted. Jesus reaches out to Peter, reminding him, Peter, your mistakes are forgiven. Jesus reaches out to Peter, reminding him, and us too, really, that we are, in truth, community. Jesus is direct and persistent, reminding Peter of their time together. He says, Simon Peter, son of John, do you love me? And Peter says, sure, Jesus, you know I love you. Jesus says, feed my lambs. Jesus continues being direct and persistent because Peter may not believe that he can be forgiven. But Jesus forgives and entrusts important work into Peter's hands. Jesus says, Simon Peter, son of John, do you love me? Peter says, yes, Jesus, I love you. Jesus says, take care of my sheep. And I think somewhat annoyingly, Jesus continues to be persistent and direct. But this is probably because Peter may not believe yet in himself. Jesus, though, believes in Peter and in the power of the work that we do together. So as much as Peter would prefer to hide and retreat, Jesus calls to Peter and sends Peter out to the world. So Jesus says again, Simon Peter, son of John, do you love me? And Peter feels upset. He says, oh, Jesus, you know everything. You know I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. and follow me. And so my friends, this is the promise that Jesus shows up for us in this way too. 
persistently inviting us to remember our time together with Jesus and with one another. It's been two months now since we've seen each other face to face. It can be hard to remember. We belong to one another. We do. Jesus shows up for us in the same way by persistently promising to us that we are accepted. We are forgiven. We are trusted. And it happens again and again and again. Jesus shows up for us the same way Jesus showed up for Peter by persistently inviting us into relationship and community with God. The creator of you, creator of me, the creator of everything, everything that is, God invites us in so that we know God's deep and abiding love. And so that God knows us, each one of us personally, intimately, and deeply. So if you are feeling disconnected, like maybe it would be easier to go and hide, sit down today and talk with Jesus because Jesus loves you always and forever. And you are not alone. You are part of a community. You are part of God's own heart. You are part of our hearts here at Bread of Life. You are part of the way that God shows love and kindness and mercy and compassion in this world. You are not alone. We lift up prayers for compassion for those who are devastated at this time. For those who have lost their jobs. The business owners whose businesses are lost. The people who have no home to stay at home in Those in leadership whose hearts are breaking over the suffering of the people in their care. Those for whom home is not a safe nor peaceful place. Those who are angry and desperate to open our economy despite the risks. those weary of fighting for the most vulnerable. Those who are the most vulnerable and who are weary of bearing the load. Those who are dying alone. And those whose hearts ache with loneliness.
and those who are shut off from anyone who might hold them when they're afraid. And those for whom God alone sees their suffering. God, make us more kind, more open-hearted, and more tender with everyone we meet. Today and every day. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please take a time. Uh, please take a moment to share God's peace with one another. So with those who are near you in your homes and with those who are near to your hearts and for with those who you would say peace to share the peace with in worship at um, the church building. So take your phones, send a text message, send an email quick. Um, a little bit later, VP with someone to say, God's peace be with you. Maybe you want to send a card or write a letter to encourage one another. We are not alone. We are not alone. This is the time in our worship service when, oh, hold on. Now is the time in our worship service when we get ready to um, send our offerings in. And uh, the spiel goes on and on, right? But we continue to do the work that God calls us to do. We continue to do this work with God because we are the way in which God shows up for other people. Our words, our actions, our hands and feet, this is how others know God is present with us and for us in the world. So through this worship experience here online, we now can share that worship experience with people far and wide all around the world to share the good news of God's love with deaf people and their families. That's our mission. That's what God asks us to do and to be about. We're continuing to do that. Even as the world around us is unknown, is upset, we don't know so many things we do know that God calls us to do this work. So please prepare your offerings, get them ready to send to, to Bread of Life as an act of worship, as an act of trust, that together with God, we can do impossible things. Let us pray. God, you come to us. We give you our offerings and our lives. Please pray with me. Now lift our hearts to you like you lifted Jesus up from the grave. Through Jesus, bind everything, bring everything from bondage to freedom from darkness to light, and from death to life. Amen. Now let us pray as Jesus taught. Amen. 
Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Just as God gathers us together, God sends us out. God gives us work to do. God trusts us to show God's kindness and love and mercy and compassion in this world. So as we are sent to do that work, receive this blessing now. Darkness has become light. Sorrow has given way to joy and hope. As you have been transformed by the power of the cross, go forth into the world and bear witness to the good news you have received this day. We go in the name of the creator and of the savior and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. You are Christ's body. Christ raised up for the world. Go in peace. Share the good news of God's love. Say it with me. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Amen.